So my goal is to make that graph go up. Um, I, I want like to, as fast as possible, to have as many Docker coins as possible. So if I look again at my architecture here, um, I'm saying, okay, so the walker is doing the, the infinite loop. So maybe if I just clone that walker, if I add multiple copies of that container, um, things should run faster. So we can give this a try. Um, conveniently, Compose gives us a way uh, to, uh, to, to scale a container. So uh, first, I'm going to interrupt the application, then restart it in the background, and then scale it. To interrupt it, I'm going to hit Control C, and this is going to show me a little interesting detail. Um, you can see that two containers stopped immediately, and like Redis and Hasher stopped in like a couple of seconds. The three others kind of lag behind. This is a small detail, but I want to spend a minute explaining what's going on here because this is, this is going to kind of catch up on us later. Um, when we stop a container, uh, we do exactly the same thing that when we stop a server or, or a service not running server. We send a signal uh, telling the, that, that process or that machine, hey, you should shut down now. Um, and the process uh, has the opportunity to clean up. So if it's a database, it can like um, commit all the in-flight transactions, close tables and everything, and then exit cleanly. If it's a web server, it could stop accepting new connections, drain all the ex existing connections, and and then exit cleanly. Um, this is pretty important to avoid like data corruptions. Uh, so in that case, uh, we have two containers who um, follow the this, this instruction. Like when they receive the the, the signal, uh, they stop. So Redis and Hasher receive the signal and immediately they quit. The three other containers, they receive the signal and they just ignore it. They continue, they keep running. So after a timeout, uh, the system is going to kill these containers. Otherwise, it would just remain like stuck forever. The same thing happens when we shut down a machine. For instance, if we have a, a SQL server, it's, it's going to cleanly shut down. Um, and so normally it will take like a few seconds. But if for some reason it takes a really long time, like there is a bug and it just like stays frozen, um, then at some point there will be a timeout and the, the init system of the machine will kill the database server. So why is this important? Because imagine that we are doing a rolling deploy. So I have 100 containers and I want to roll out a new version. So I want to replace uh, each container by the new version, like one by one. So I shut down the container, wait for the shutdown to be complete, start the new container, and then I go to the second one, shut down, wait until it's uh, shut down and then uh, spin up the new version, etc., etc. If my containers take one second to shut down, my whole like running update is going to take 100 seconds. So that's like one and one and a half minute. Um, now, if my containers are ignoring signals and if the timeout is not 10 seconds like with Docker, but one minute, which is more typical with Kubernetes, my running update is going to take 100 minutes which is one and a half hour. So just because of some signal handling, my rolling update goes from one and a half minutes to one and a half hour. And I think that's kind of a big deal. And so I think that's a pretty good incentive to correctly deal with signals. And that's why I wanted to spend a minute to, to explain that. Okay. That being said, I'm going to restart the application in the background. So Docker Compose up dash D, D meaning like detached or demonized. And now I'm going to add dash dash scale walker equal to. And when I do that, it's just like spinning up an additional copy of the walker container. If I look at my web UI, well, first of all, I see that during the whole time that the program was stopped, I have like this gap here. And after I scaled, now I'm going at like eight hashes per second. Great. Since this seems to be working as expected, I'm, I'm going to scale further. Uh, okay. Three walkers. Look at the graph. Now I'm at, at like 12. That's great. 
Uh, and then, well, I'm going to scale to 10 workers and I should have like 40 hashes per second and I should be able to call it a day. Except this is not going to work as expected. First of all, we are not going to 40 hashes per second, but even worse, it looks like we're going back to 10 hashes per second. Okay, so first, we never went up to 12 hashes per second. That didn't happen. In fact, if you look here, the graph looks a little bit like a comb. Um, so we were not doing like 12, but more like 12, and then the second after only 8, and then 12 again, and then only 8. Uh, but on average, we never went past 10 hashes uh, per second. There are some really good reasons for that. And I, I can add as many workers as I want. I will never be past 10 hashes per second. Um, okay. So now let's, let's see what's happening. Why, why can't I go past this limit? Um, maybe I have like a, a bottleneck with CPU or RAM or anything like that. So if I use, for instance, top, uh, top shows me that I have plenty of idle CPU cycles, like 90%, 80%. So I have plenty of CPU available. I also have plenty of RAM available. Like the, these machines have four gigs of RAM. This tells me I have 700 megs of RAM available. Um, maybe I have like uh, IO issues. So I can use a tool like VMstat. It's, it's really crude, but it shows me like the disk IO. And the disk IO shows me that I'm not swapping in or out. And BIBO, block in, block out, that's also disk activity. I have absolutely nothing in disk reads. And I have a little bit of disk write activity. This is basically the logs of the containers like being written. But this is tiny. This is insignificant. This is absolutely not, not a problem. So I have plenty of resources available and I would like to be able to use them.